And this really will show us how we can truly, and I'm really wanting to emphasize truly here, truly let it go and give it over to the Lord and not swing back in five business days and pick it back up. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Melody and I make faith-based content here on YouTube. I post new videos every single Monday. So if that is something you're interested in, definitely be sure and subscribe. I would love to have you join the family. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about how to truly, and I really wanna emphasize truly here, how to truly give it to God. And when I say it, I mean that thing in your life that you know you need to leave in the Lord's hands. I feel like we all have something in our lives that we know we need to give over to the Lord, but we have a hard time truly surrendering it to Him. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys three instructions that we can pull from a specific parable in Matthew. Specifically is Matthew chapter 20, verses one through 16. And it's the parable of the vineyard owner. And I'm gonna be pulling from this particular parable that Jesus shared with His disciples. And this really will show us how we can truly, and I'm really wanting to emphasize truly here, truly let it go and give it over to the Lord and not swing back in five business days and pick it back up. So before we hop into it, of course, I think it's important for us to just go ahead and break down what this parable is all about. Again, the verses are Matthew chapter 20, verses one through 16. But as I break down this parable, I'm just gonna kind of relay it to you guys and paraphrase what it's all about. And around me, actually, now we're kind of upgrading things, guys. We have a little green screen action going on. So around me, you will see the Bible verse pop up. So feel free to pause as I'm breaking it down and read it for yourself or pull up your Bible and um, read it that way. So all that being said, let's talk about this parable. So this is coming out of Matthew chapter 20 and the book of Matthew is only 28 chapters long. So this parable is more than halfway through. And at this point, there has been quite a few parables throughout the book, but this one really stood out to me and I feel like you guys are gonna love it too. Let's get into it. The parable opens up with Jesus saying that there is a vineyard owner. The vineyard owner goes to the marketplace at dawn and he hires workers. He agrees to pay these workers one denarius and they happily go over to his vineyard and start working. So then he goes back to the same marketplace at nine. He asks some people standing around like, hey, why aren't you working? What are you doing? And they say, oh, no one has hired us yet. And so the vineyard owner says, okay, you can come over to my vineyard and work and I will pay you what's right. So then the vineyard owner continues to do this throughout the day. He goes back to that marketplace. Again, he was there at six, he was there at nine, he goes back at 12, he goes there at three, and then he goes there at five. So then at the end of the day, when it's time to pay all of the workers, he decides that he's going to line up the workers last to first. So the people who got there at 5 p.m. are going to be paid first, and the people who got there at 6 a.m. are going to be paid last. Now as this happens, they don't know exactly how much they're going to be paid. They only know, again, that they're going to be paid what's right, except the people that were hired at 6 a.m. They were told they were going to be paid one denarius. So as the vineyard owner starts paying out these people, again, starting from the last to first, the people that he hired at 5 p.m., so essentially they only worked one hour, they were paid one denarius. You go down to the people that are hired at three, they were paid one denarius, people hired at 12, one denarius, people hired at nine, one denarius. So when it gets down to the workers that were hired at 6 a.m., they start to get angry. They start to feel like it is completely unfair that they are only being paid one denarius when someone who has only worked one hour got one denarius. And the vineyard owner turns to them and says, this is what you agreed to. When I hired you, you said you were gonna work the day for one denarius. Are you envious and jealous of them because of my generosity? This is my vineyard. I can be generous if I want to. So the parable wraps up with the vineyard owner saying that the first will be last and the last will be first. And then depending on your version of the Bible, it also says that many are called, but few are chosen. And now you might be thinking, how does this correlate into how to truly let go and give something to the Lord? Well, sis, let's get into it. So number one on our list, the very first truth that we can pull from this parable is we have to know on this journey to truly letting go and giving God something, we have to hold into our hearts and accept that God's ways are not our ways. 
So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I often have a pretty easy time giving God something when I can see progress being made. However, my vantage point is so incredibly limited that I need to let that go completely and we're working on it, okay? We're truly working on it. But the idea that only when I can see from my very limited perspective how God is moving, then I trust him, that actually isn't displaying trust at all. We have to trust that even though we don't understand what God is up to, that he is working things out, that he is being the good, good God that he is. And in this story, this vineyard owner, he's moving and choosing to make decisions in a very strange manner. Choosing to continuously go into the marketplace and hire deep into the afternoon when workers are only going to be working for one hour. That is something that isn't really conventional back then and even now, but that is how the Lord works. And so we can rest assured that when we truly let go and give something over to God, that he is going to be working in that same manner. It's gonna be unconventional we might not see progress in the way that we think we should see progress, but he is still working things together. And so the quicker that we can accept that, the easier it is going to be to truly let this thing go, whatever this is, and leave it in his hand. And so that is going to be number one. So number two on our list today, the second thing that we can do to truly let go and give something over to God is to remove the desire of wanting what other people have from our lives, and more importantly, our hearts. So this whole concept of wanting what other people have, the term for that is covet. We do not wanna covet what other people have. We wanna know that God is a good, good God, God is a generous God, and that we will have everything that we need supplied to us through the Lord. And that is something that became a stumbling block for the vineyard workers who were hired at 6 a.m. At the beginning of the morning, they happily accepted one Daenerys as their pay for the entire day. But when they saw, first of all, that the vineyard workers hired at 5 p.m. were paid first, and then that they were still paid a whole dollar for only working, I'm sorry, a whole dollar, a whole Daenerys for only working one hour, they became enraged. And sometimes, let's be honest, that is us too. We might find ourselves toiling away from the Lord, truly in our best attempts and efforts, giving something over to him, entrusting his plan and his path for us. And then we look over here and we see someone else maybe seemingly getting to the destination that we wanna to get to faster than us or without so many speed bumps as us. But let's be honest again, we don't know the price someone had to pay to get to where they are. So this is where it's important for us to truly rid this idea of wanting what other people have from our hearts on this journey to truly letting go and giving something to God. It's in the moments where we start to compare. It's in those moments where we start to feel that envy and jealousy rise up and it makes us wanna swing on back and pick up that thing that we gave to the Lord previously because he's not moving fast enough or he's not moving in the way that he showed up for someone else. And just like the vineyard owner, God is generous. So we don't have to have this fear in us that thinks that when someone else gets something that there's not gonna be enough left for us. God is generous and there is more than enough to go around and there is absolutely no lack in the kingdom of God. So that is going to be number two. So number three on our list today, the third thing that we can do on this journey to truly let go and give something over to God is to look for his grace on this journey because it is going to be there. Just like the vineyard workers experienced, especially the ones that were hired later in the day and in the afternoon, they experienced the vineyard owner, who again, this parable, the vineyard owner is God. They experienced this undeserved grace. They received a whole day's wage, one Daenerys, for only working either part of an afternoon or only one hour. And that's something that on this journey to truly give something over to God, we too are going to experience. We're gonna experience his supernatural grace to one, maybe truly drop something off and not swing back and pick it up, but two, maybe we're gonna get that encouragement, that little word of encouragement that we needed and that we didn't even know that we needed in the moment. And he's going to give that to us through something we read in the Bible, a random devotional we pick up, or maybe just talking to a friend. It's on this journey and when we are looking for his grace that we are going to be certain to find it. And this grace that is displayed through this parable is something that is going to keep us going strong on this journey. It is hard and it goes against our human nature to truly let something go but it is also completely necessary and completely possible with 
the Lord. And to know that the God that we serve gives us this abundant, amazing gift of salvation, how much more will he honor our sacrifice of giving something over to him and truly letting it go? And so that is going to be number three. All right, guys, that is going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And now, of course, it is your turn. So after today, I want to know what is one thing, whether it is a specific thing, an area of your life, what is one thing that you will be letting go and truly giving over to God and not swinging back around to pick up in three business days? I'm going to be sharing my response in the comments. So definitely take a second, drop your response and scroll on through. As always, I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Peace.